it's an overly simplified thought experiment, but a couple of base assumptions here, right? Is like, so we're a venture fund. Uh, usually we, so we have 640 million, let's say it was 500 million just to make math slightly easier. Um, and we need to, let's arguably say three X returns also just to make math easy. Great funds do much, much better than that. Um, but so that means, you know, by the end of your investment cycle, you know, the enterprise value of your company is that in your ownership and that needs to be about 1.5 billion. Um, if you, uh, own, let's say 20% of a company upon exit, um, that means that the total enterprise value of your portfolio, uh, has to be, you know, 1.5 times five. And so, you know, 7.5, uh, and so. And then we think furthermore about the fact that fund returners, the way that um, it works as you follow sort of Fred Wilson's teaching is like about a third of your company's return, the fund about a third return their money and about a third return zero. Um, so about a third of the companies that you invest in should return the majority of the money in the fund. And then, so if we work backwards, let's say a third returns zero. And so we've got 500 million, let's say we're doing $10 million series A's we reserve another $10 million uh, for follow-on investment pro rata to maintain our ownership. Um, that's roughly 25 companies invested in. Um, and then, so of those 25 companies, I'll just round it down to 24 to make it divided by three easier. It's about eight companies go to zero. Eight are gonna return the money you put in, which is to say eight are gonna return you know, 20 million, uh, which is gonna be 160 million. Um, uh, but that's the money you've already put in. And then the remaining eight have to generate, you know, that 7.5 billion of enterprise value, which roughly translates to about, let's say, 800, 900 million, you know, upon exit. Um, and so when we think about that and then think about our ownership and all this stuff, like it just, there is no way to return a fund without having your companies really think about becoming multi-billion dollar investments and outcomes. Um, and I think that's the hardest thing to encapsulate your mind around because we frequently have to pass on companies that might quote only be 200, 300 million dollar companies because it just can't move the needle and we can't justify our investment dollars and we can't justify our time to invest into them. Um, and I, I think it's something that we really push upon founders and try to be open with as quickly as possible because I think they're frequently surprised, especially PhD students, when they think they can build really interesting cash flow businesses that might be worth 50 million. And that's life changing and valuable to literally anybody, uh, but it doesn't work in our math.